Entrepreneurs have one thing in common. They keep going. They'll change the rules. They'll reinvent them. You know, they don't just take one answer. Entrepreneur is a mindset first, a skill set, and rules. When you don't have this paycheck, you get hungrier, smarter, and it's a test of your character. Will you become a crook? Will you become dishonest? Will you cheat and steal? Or will you become a better human being? So really that's the benefit of becoming an entrepreneur is you really find out who you are when you don't have anything. So if you fail, that's when I became an entrepreneur because I had no money. I had no money for years. You know, I didn't have a paycheck. My last paycheck, I still remember it clearly. It was one of the worst and the best days of my life. And I was in Puerto Rico. I was, in, I was working for Xerox, and my boss gave me my last, it wasn't a paycheck, it was a bonus check. I think it was about 30,000 bucks. So I got this check, and I went, oh. I was excited, but I was also disturbed. And so this other guy comes up to me, his name was John, and John says to me, he says, you're going to be back. I said, why? He says, because you're going to fail, because that's what he did. He left Xerox, failed, and he came back. And I said, look, you failed, and you came back but I'm gonna fail and I'm never coming back. And that's the attitude. A poor person with a poor personal economy, all they're gonna see is a bad economy because they don't know how to make money in any economy. And a middle class person, they have a middle class economy. You know, they, what they want is a nice house and a steady paycheck and the job and the car. And so when you take their job away to them, that's disaster. You mess with me, I'll find a way around it. The number one skill to be an entrepreneur is leadership, the ability to listen, to not take it personally, and kill, still get the job done. It is the best training in the world. Everything is opposite. Instead of get out of debt, I get into debt. You know, I just refinanced 300 million in debt. I went from 5% to 2.5% in interest. I made a fortune every month more money comes in because my cost of money has gone down. You know, Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge, but knowledge empowers imagination. And what most people lack is real business knowledge, like accounting, you know, like debt, like taxes. You gotta know that stuff, but they don't teach it in school to anybody. Debt and taxes make the rich richer debt and taxes make the poor middle class poor. So all the rich guys who are doctors and lawyers, those guys, they're getting creamed and they don't know why. My doctor just yelled at me, he's happy, he says, oh, guess what, I finally made a million dollars. And so I said, yeah, well, well, how much you pay in tax? He says, 750,000 in tax. So his net was about 400,000. That's not bad. The, re the reason I could retire early was because I'm in debt. I borrowed my butt off to retire early. The thing that scares me right now is never have so many people in the history of the world bet their retirement on the stock market. And they've bet real money. Trust me, the market will crash. Always has and always will. The average person is going to take to 65, 75 as long as possible because they're trying to retire on equity. In other words, they're going to try and use their hard-earned cash to retire, where I would rather use the bank's money to retire. So I am in debt up to my eyeballs because I'm sure some of your parents told you to get out of debt. Well, that's not that intelligent because you have to know there's good debt and bad debt. And most people are loaded with bad debt. And if you want to get rich, load up with good debt. And the question I was those bankers, I said, let me ask you this, how long would it take you to save a million dollars? A couple of years at least, right? How long does it take you to borrow a million dollars? About 10 minutes, if you have good financials. And that's the difference. When I make a million bucks, I keep a million bucks. And that's the price people pay for not being educated in this world, to think that they have to work hard, save money, and finance your retirement on equity. I'd rather do it on debt. And the way I do it on debt is my banker will always lend me money on a thing called real estate. Always. They will not lend me money to buy stocks. They won't lend me a million dollars for 30 years at 8%. But if I find a commercial building, million dollars, 8%, 30, they'll all day long. In real estate, I pay zero tax. So every time I make, let's say, a million dollars as an entrepreneur, I immediately invest it in real estate. I have a four to one step up. So I put a million dollars in real estate, I can get four million from the bank. That's why I love banks. So the reason is because as entrepreneurs, I have more control over my income, how much I make, 
and how much I pay in taxes. And because I'm an entrepreneur as well as an investor, one of the reasons I wanted to get educated, understand cash flow, play the game, was just so I could borrow money faster. I called my broker down the street here and said, I need 2.4. He says, come in and sign the paperwork. 2.4 million, just sign. That was it. Because I can take that money and make 10 million out of it. The average person will go on vacation with it, will buy a big house or buy a boat. It's called fiduciary responsibility. If you can prove you know how to manage your money and you have the good financials, plus you have a couple of million in cash, they'll lend you all the money you want. And so when I acquire an asset, I use debt. So what happens, I make money in my, let's say my business, book sales. At that point, let's say I make a million dollars in books. What I have to borrow is like 10 million in debt to buy a property. And because I borrowed the 10 million, I buy a property. And let's say the property is, uh, I buy 10 million, it's now 100 million. It's the magic called financing. I pay no taxes. So the more debt I have, the more property I buy, the less tax I pay. It's called appreciation, depreciation, amortization. If you studied accounting, that's what you would learn. But most of these academic types live debt free and they own a house they call an asset and they drive their Lexus or their Toyota, they wonder what's wrong with me. But they never studied money in school. An asset is very simply something that puts money in your pocket. So when people, you know, they make some money to buy a house, but if they stop working, that house starts taking money from their pocket. So right. it's not an asset. You buy a nice car, the car keeps taking money from your pocket. So it's a liability. So I write a book and I get paid several hundred thousand a month from my rich dad, poor dad. My book is an asset. If I buy a car and I lease it to an Uber driver, it could be an asset. It depends on the cash flow. So if you're not going to study, you're not going to practice and all that, then you should do what Wall Street tells you to do. Buy 401ks, mutual funds, ETFs and all that. But that, that's where they're fake assets. A lot of people get financial advice from outsiders. If you know, maybe a financial planner, or a stockbroker, or a real estate broker, but they're not on the inside of the deal. And one of the reasons I like being an entrepreneur and being a real estate guy is I'm always trading from the inside. I know the deal. I'm part of the deal. I am the deal, you know. But the average person who buys like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and saves money, they're outsiders. They have no idea what's going on between them and the real world of inside.